Hi, my name is Emily. I'm a faithful follower of Christ, and I'm on day 210 of eating only beef and butter. But who cares about that? Not me. Um, so the books of the Bible, I want to memorize all 66. There are 66 total divided between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And... Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty seven. Twenty seven of them are in the New Testament, which means sixty six minus twenty seven. Thirty nine. Thirty nine are in the Old Testament, twenty seven in the New. That is much closer to half and half than I thought. Um, but I want to have them all memorized. So here is what I'm doing. I have started, thank you for your prayers, any of you that are praying, um, a new ministry that has turned into a jail ministry, and it's going so well. It's such a blessing. It's such an honor. I cannot get enough. I love it so much. It's become a part-time job. I'm in two different jails now. I, I am discipling 25, 26 women um, 19 of which are incarcerated, a couple are in rehab, and then a few are friends of mine at my church. Um, and I'm giving each one of them one of these Bibles. So what I do is the jail allows me to tab them for them. Life Application Study Bibles, NIV, my favorite Bible of all time. So here's the Bible, and the jail allows me to give them tabs, which I think the tabs are an absolute deal maker. It makes it possible to um, thumb through quickly. Uh, here's my old tabs. And I went up here and took a red marker years ago. Look, mine are all broken. Uh, they're not, they're, I don't know, some are miss missing. But I took a red marker and circled, I drew around every book that Paul authored. Paul wrote so many of the books of the New Testament. So here's these beautiful tabs. And there are, um, I get all, I get most of the girls, they get to choose, but I get most of them large print. It's not even that large. But these really, really pretty, look at these. These are called cappuccino. So beautiful. These tabs. Um, so, I love it. So, so pretty. But I love this work that I'm doing and sharing with these women that Paul wrote most of the books of the Bible of the 13 that he book wrote or, um, in prison, from prison. So here was a man who had the mind of Christ, was living the life of Christ. Galatians 2.20, it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And he was just the living, breathing embodiment of 2 Corinthians 3.17, that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So some of these women that I meet with tell me, I'm going to be out next week. And then I go to visit them at the jail I uh, visit the group of gals, and there they are sitting there. And I'm like, oh, I thought you were going to be out, and here you are. And they they tell me, oh, no, I had my final sentencing, and I got eight more years. And one girl said, I got eight more years, and then I'll probably get nine more on top of that. And I try to quickly pick my job off the floor so that I don't make them feel discouraged. I want to be an encouragement. And they're at peace. Um, they don't seem as shocked as I am, but... Anyways, Philippians 4, 7. We can have a peace beyond understanding. Philippians 4, 8. If it's noble, pure, lovely, admirable, praiseworthy, true, right, think of such things. So it's such an honor to help these women train their brains to keep their eyes fixed on Christ. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 through 2. Let us throw off everything that hinders us. And the sin that so easily entangles, and run with endurance this race set, this race set before us, as Christ has done, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. Oh, I believe that begins with with such a cloud of witnesses of saints. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. And that's where we can have a peace beyond understanding, internal peace with external chaos. All right. 
I want to memorize all the books of the Bible, and this is how far I've gotten. And what I'm realizing is I think it's going to help me to come up with a story. So the first few gel in past tense with a D at the end, gel end. So we're gelling. Anybody ever see that commercial, gelling? They put like gel insoles in a shoe, and they called it gelling. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and then a D at the end. Just why not make it past tense? Gelland? I don't know. These are the things we remember. When you need to go to the store and get paper plates, super glue, post-it notes, and milk. Have you ever noticed we can usually remember all but one? Unless you make up a story or create an image like a plate filled with milk for a little kitten. And then the kitten has a post-it note super glued to its foot. You might go to the story and remember that, excuse me, you might go to the store and remember that silly story of the kitten drinking milk off a plate with a post-it note super glued to his foot. And then you'll remember, I need milk, paper plates, super glue, and post-it notes. So a silly story, that's what I'm working on. So. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra. That's how far I got. And here's how. Jelland, I'm just sticking with it. It's silly, but it works. Then along came Joshua and then Judges and then Ruth. So I'm calling her Judge Ruth. And the men were real irritated that there was a woman that was a judge. So along came first, first Samuel, second Samuel. And that wasn't enough. The kings were upset too that a woman was a judge. I don't know. Come on, just bear with me. I'm making this up. Um, kings came along. Well, then they wanted to chronicle all of this. They wanted to have it all written down. So first and second chronicles. And now Ezra. So first Ruth and now Ezra. So that's how far I've gotten. I will keep you updated. There's only 66. That's doable, right? My kids are memorizing a song, but I don't think I want all those, all that, that melody. I don't want the music up in here. I got enough going on <laughs> with stories and pictures and visuals. I don't think I want to add tunes and melodies. I don't know. I love it. Whatever works. Amen. Whatever works. So that's it. I love you dearly. I hope you're doing well. Greg and I are doing well. Um, 210 days of beef only. And, um, we just breezed through Thanksgiving, and the physical cravings are pretty well gone. The mental cravings pop up when I let them. Like when I had a cough, no, I lost my voice, and I started Googling, what do I need to do to get my voice back? Drink honey tea. And I was like, all right, someone give me a bear of honey. You know those little honey bears? I'll put a little on my tea and then I'll open my mouth and drink the rest. So I was like, Greg, I'm going to get some honey. He was like, do not do it because I would go from honey to a Dairy Queen cake. So then I was dealing with a craving and I have a video on this, but cravings are like a fire and you might not be able to put it out immediately, but you can take away the oxygen, the heat and the fuel. So it finally did go away and I did some reflecting and thought I have no business thinking about honey. It's like when I lost my taste and smell with COVID years ago and I was trying to be no sugar, but I heard that if you roast an orange and cover it in brown sugar. It'll help you with your taste and smell. So why not try, right? So I ate an orange and about half a bag of brown sugar with a spoon. Didn't help my taste and smell, but I got nice and high. So anyways, sugar's a drug and I'm sober, 210 days sober. Um, we contributed deviled eggs and a gorgeous prime rib that my son put on the smoker and everyone tore into that thing. Yes, there was turkey, but I saw a lot of prime rib eating. So we feasted on Thanksgiving. We'll do something similar at Christmas. It's going so well. Um, my eczema is gone. My mental health issues are gone. Absolutely no depression or anxiety. Greg's blood pressure stays down. I can count on my clothes fitting me and I've gone to the store and bought new ones because I thought I think I'm going to be at this size for a while. Um, the weight's not falling off but every time I go to the doctor they're like I tell them I don't want to see the number. I, I don't know what I weigh. I haven't weighed for over a year and a half. They say you know your your weight is going down every time. You're 13 pounds less than you were when you were here last time. You're a couple. They said it's not rapid but it is headed in the right direction. Amen. 
God does not expect perfection, but he does expect direction. So hallelujah for being headed in the right direction. I hope each of you are headed in the right direction, which is towards Jesus Christ, especially during the Advent season of his coming birth. Hallelujah. The birth of Jesus, the best gift of all time. I'm reading a little book right now that's talking about the Christian calendar. We go from Advent into Lent, into Easter, into Pentecost, I don't know, and then it cycles back around, and um, it's good. God is good. He is with us, Emmanuel, and um, the more we're in the Word, the more the Word is in us, so I just texted my mom and said, look, I'm rotating between reading a page of Isaiah, because i got to get through Isaiah before the end of December. I'm in a Bible reading group, and we've read about 60, no, 50 of the 66 books. Um, I'm reading a page of Isaiah. I'm tabbing a page of, one full page of tabs for these four ladies. I've got four more Bibles to give out. I'm going to order 11 more on Tuesday. A page of Isaiah, a page of tabs, seven gulps of water. You see all those bottles of water right there? They're all mine. They've just been sitting around the house. So I gathered them all. I'm going to drink them all. Seven gulps of water and then five minutes. I use my microwave as a timer of dishes or laundry. And then we're taking a bunch of kids to get basketball shoes and an ornament and out to dinner. So Merry Christmas. I love you dearly. We'll talk again soon. Bye.